Okay, welcome back to Durham Precious Metals. It's Tom here. I noticed by listening back to some of my YouTube um, previous videos that I sound kind of boring. And uh, so I'm going to try to perk it up a little bit here. Maybe I'll do some jumping jacks while I'm I'm uh, sending out this message. Anyway, I get into this conversation a lot down at the store with people. And and uh, new people and even people that have been involved a while, they, they start questioning, well, what's better to buy? Is it gold or silver? So... Reality is neither. They're both perfectly good. And now, the proof of this is if I uh, go, for example, to goldseek.com. And, and the reason I send you to Goldseek is because it's got the gold and silver charts. They're they're not great charts. They're just rudimentary charts. But anyway, the point is, is that two charts are uh, on the main page. So you can see them both simultaneously. Now, if you look at those two charts, you'll see that gold and silver, for the most part, and for, I just say for the most part, tend to follow each other up and down in price. Now, historically, silver has been a little bit more volatile than gold. As gold moves up a few percent, silver tends to move a little bit higher. As gold moves lower, gold tends to move lower with it. Or sorry, the other way around. Gold moves lower, silver tends to move a little bit lower. So it, it tends to be more volatile, but they still... Uh, generally tend to follow each other. There's a correlation there. Um, I'm always amazed when the correlation breaks. And as a matter of fact, it's the it's the um, the rule that it follows, and it's the exception to the rule when it doesn't correlate exactly. And uh, I always wonder what the heck is going on when it doesn't correlate. The point being um, that when it doesn't correlate, it's something's fishy, and we don't know what that is necessarily. It could be manipulation in the markets and all that good stuff good stuff what am i kidding me bad stuff but anyway uh just a just a figure of speech so um the point is is that being that when it doesn't correlate is very rare uh the, the alternative being the most common like 99.9 percent .9 of the time it correlates that's good news as to what to buy really it just comes down to personal preference because Neither one is to an advantage financially, and that's what this whole diatribe here has been about. Uh, so really, it's partially psychological. I often say to people, you know, when you buy a probably the two closest products in price, although they're not exact, um, would be a 5-gram gold bar and an assay card and a 10-ounce silver bar. And psychologically, when you look at these two, you've got this little, you know, just a little bigger than a thumb-nized, thumb-nized, what the heck is that, thumb-sized, you know, wafer of gold, and then you have this big, you know, chunk of silver in a bar, and the chunk of silver is, uh, the 10 ounce bar is actually less expensive than the little five gram gold. So perception wise, it just seems like you're getting more for your money when you're buying silver. That being said, uh, it really depends on the person. If you're just buying small amounts, relatively small amounts, I should say, um, and you got a couple 300 bucks to spend at a time, you know, five gram or two and a half gram gold is, is an okay buy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, and silver 10 ounce bars or five ounce bars or whatever you want, 10 rounds or whatever for those under $300 purchases, they're perfectly good too. And we get a lot of people that fall into that category. So it, it it's really in, in that regard, doesn't really matter. Whatever you like, maybe, maybe mix it up, buy a little of both. Uh, now, if you're a large buyer, if you're buying really large volumes, then silver at that point can get to be a bit cumbersome. Like, you know, jokingly, a few of my customers down at the store, I, I jokingly say, how many pounds do you have now? And when I hear the numbers back, I'm, I'm shocked. So it gets to be a bit cumbersome when you start getting 100, you know, 150, 200 pounds of silver, um, you know, as far as storage space, if you have a small safe or something. Uh, yeah, it gets to be a bit much. And if you're renting a safety deposit box, whoa, now we're really talking expensive. So uh, I recommend, you know, just for the sake of of keeping it down, you know, the, the size down to a minimum, I, I would go with gold at that point. So that's about it. Um, really isn't a lot, you know, to dwell on. Uh, I mean, if I went on for another five minutes, I'd just be repeating myself. So whatever you like, gold, silver, mix it up doesn't really matter from a financial standpoint if that's your concern or tradeability or resale or anything they're they're pretty much all the same it's much simpler you know we always say uh, buying bullion is not rocket science and it's not so anyway there's something to think about have a nice day bye